everyone, I'm Gabby Winkler and you are watching Etymology, a series about the most curious stories of the most ordinary culinary ingredients. And today we are going to continue talking about the humblest tuber from our kitchen, the potato. This video is the second part of the potato series, so if you missed the first one, don't forget to check out the previous one here! <gasps> in our previous episodes, we discussed the origin of this humble spot and how it ended up in Europe. Now we've reached the 17th century and potato eating still wasn't too fashionable. The devil's apple was reserved for animals or as food for the poorest of the poor. Even though Europe constantly faced famine, and plagues. You probably wonder why. We all love potatoes today. Why didn't Europeans want to eat them? You see, the potato had a giant PR problem. So it took clever marketing like Frederick the Great's Potato Act in Prussia and Antoine Augustin Parmentier's effort in France to change the public's opinion. And also some weather changes. From the early 14th century till the mid 19th century, something weird was happening to the weather, which went down in history as the Little Ice Age. During this time, Europe had unusual usually cold weather, which made quite difficult to produce enough food. This period was marked by frequent famines and hunger, making life challenging for many. If grains failed to grow and the harvest was bad, what could help? Well, you guessed it! The potato! Originating from the Andean mountains, potatoes were kind of the superheroes of the plant kingdom. They could grow in any harsh environment. What's more, Planting and harvesting them required nothing more than your hands. No fancy tools needed. After harvesting, you just needed to boil them and they were ready to eat. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Much easier than all the tasks involved in making bread. Another advantage of potatoes was their underground growth, which protected them from animals and hungry soldiers during wartime. But the real magic was in their productivity. Potatoes could yield up to three times more calories per unit of land compared to grains, making them a vital food source during difficult times. So, they only needed an early potato influencer to spread the word of their magical properties. One of the early supporters of the potato was Frederick the Great of Prussia. During his reign, Europe faced constant warfare. And that meant a lot of hungry soldiers, which worsened the already present widespread famine. Because what do hungry soldiers do? Pillage. For example, the Thirty Years' War from 1618 to 1648 led to some of the worst famines in European history. In some regions, half the population effectively disappeared. During these difficult times, some crafty peasants figured that armies would ignore potatoes completely when they were looking for food. Soldiers were too lazy to dig up the field for some food, so they left the potato crops untouched. Probably Frederick the Great heard about this because in 1744 he distributed some potato tubers to grow them across Prussia. But of course, the people weren't very convinced about his idea. When the town of Kohlberg received the first shipment, they were disgusted. Officers responsible for the delivery reported that peasants believed that potatoes would cause scorufola, rickets and gout. Furthermore, they complained that the things had no taste. Not even dogs would eat them. According to legend, Frederick threatened them that any peasants who refused to plant the crops would have their noses cut off. But there is little to no evidence to support this claim. In 1756, he issued the famous Katofelbe, or the Potato Act, which ordered everyone in Prussia to plant potatoes wherever they could find room for them. Hardy and less likely to spoil, potatoes helped to defeat famine and effectively doubled the amount of food in Europe. When the Seven Years' War began in 1756, even though Prussia was faced with wave after wave of invasion, the kingdom proved remarkably resilient. Frederick, who supported potatoes enthusiastically, went down in history as the Kartoffelkönig, or Potato King. Today, people still honor his legacy by leaving potatoes at his grave in Potsdam, recognizing him as the leader who introduced Germany to its beloved staple crop. This is Antoine Augustin Parmentier, a marketing genius who is possibly the reason why Americans call fried potatoes French fries. Parmentier's journey began during his time as a prisoner of the Seven Years' War, when he was locked up 
five times by the Prussian army. He spent most of the 1750s eating nothing but potatoes. Surprisingly, he not only survived, but felt quite healthy. Being a smart guy, he figured that it had to do something with the potato's nutritional value. And this time, famines were recurring events throughout Europe. But the kings of France, all those Louis, instead of trying to fix the country's problems, preferred to fight with their neighbors while partying in Versailles. They spent every single penny they had in the treasury on war. France was on the verge of bankruptcy. Malnutrition due to starving left everyone but the rich completely vulnerable to disease. And millions of French farmers and peasants died. The famine of 1693 alone may have killed more French citizens than World War I. A century of constant famine, grain shortages, and the skyrocketing prices of bread eventually led to a wave of riots in 1775, the so-called Flower War, which was fueled by the idea that Louis XVI was starving people on purpose. Upon his release from prison, when Parmentier saw the state of the country, he set on a quest of finding a cheap food source for the poor to stop the endless riots. And he had a groundbreaking idea. Can you guess it? In 1771, he launched a campaign to promote potatoes. He organized lavish potato dinners for influential figures, like the king and the queen. Despite initial resistance and ban on potato cultivation and consumption by the French parliament because of fears of leprosy, Parmentier's efforts paid off. According to legend, the turning point came on the king's birthday, when Parmentier presented a bouquet of potato flowers to Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. After this, the aristocracy went mad about potatoes. It became super trendy to have them in noble menus and to use potato flowers as decorating elements. In a sense, we can say Parmentier invented the so-called influencer marketing. He also hosted exclusive potato-only dinners, attended by noble figures like Benjamin Franklin and possibly Thomas Jefferson. When Jefferson returned home at a dinner party, he showcased the dishes that he had particularly enjoyed in Paris. And as the legend goes, this could have been the occasion at which America was introduced to its beloved French fries. It's one thing that royalty started eating potatoes, but everyday people still feared them. To overcome lingering prejudice and convince people of the potatoes' value, Parmentier orchestrated another clever strategy. He ordered soldiers to guard the potato fields during harvest, so people thought something super valuable was planted there the soldiers were instructed to disappear at sunset. And sure enough, the locals sneaked in to steal the forbidden fruit during the night. That did the trick. People slowly started eating potatoes. The king told Parmentier that France will thank him someday for having found bread for the poor. Well, France did indeed. While Louis XVI met a tragic end at the guillotine, Parmentier became a hero. His potatoes were declared to be the food of the revolution. To symbolize this, the elaborate gardens of the Tuileries Palace were dug up and replanted with potatoes. Traditionally, people used to plant potatoes at Parmentier's grave. Nowadays, he is remembered through a Paris metro station and by chefs who feel that potato soup looks rather boring on the menu, so instead they call it potage Parmentier. In fact, if you go to France and you see Parmentier on the menu, you can be 100% sure that it will have potatoes in it. Unfortunately, the problems of constant famine due to failing crops and bad weather wasn't really solved with the revolution. Hunger was a constant threat in 17th and 18th century Europe until potatoes saved the day. When Napoleon seized power, his reign overlapped with the coldest weather modern Europe had ever seen. Each year was colder than the last, leading up to 1815, when a massive volcanic eruption in Indonesia closed global weather anomalies. The ash from the eruption column dispersed around the world and lowered global temperatures, making 1816 known as the year without a summer. The year without a summer disrupted the standing world order and had a profound effect on global agriculture, economies, and societies. The potato, however, proved resilient. By 1850, France was producing 10 million tons of potatoes, making it the leading potato producer in continental Europe. 
This potato boom led to a huge population growth, because children didn't die at an early age, and it also increased life expectancy. A simple diet of potatoes provided all essential vitamins, even increasing the average height of French villagers. The potatoes' impact was profound, transforming Europe from its core. This unprecedented population growth eventually led to massive economic developments and triggered the Industrial Revolution. With fewer people needed to work the land, many moved to cities to work in factories. The potato provided these growing urban populations with affordable, nutritious food, making it the backbone of the industrial economy. But the potato's journey from disgusted root to reliable staple was just the beginning. Despite overcoming initial resistance, its story took dramatic turns intertwined with some of history's most important events. Next time on Etymology, we'll dive into how the increasing need of growing more potatoes led to the Guano Wars in Latin America and uncover how it is unlikely conflict fueled agricultural revolutions. We'll also explore the devastating Irish potato blight that led to widespread famine and migration, reshaping entire societies. Finally, we'll trace the rise of the humble spot in modern cuisine, from fast food fries to crispy potato chips, and how they became global icons. Stay tuned for more incredible stories from our kitchen, and don't forget to like, Subscribe and share this video with your potato-loving friends. See you next time. Bye.